Thank you again, councillors, and to all the public who are here this evening. Uh, and welcome to our council meeting um, this evening. May I also extend a warm welcome to members of the public who are here watching and on our webcast. I would like to remind members of how I intend to deal with the guillotine this evening if I need to. Understanding all the nine of the council procedure rules, I do intend to take a formal comfort break this evening and I will propose a 10 minute adjournment at the appropriate point during the meeting between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. Where three hours have elapsed, so in other words 9 p.m., after the commencement of the meeting, at, after the commencement of the meeting, I shall interrupt the meeting and the member speaking must immediately cease speaking and sit down. The meeting shall then dispose of the item then under consideration as if the motion. That the question now we put had been carried. We will then vote on that and any remaining. Moving on. Declarations, <coughs> declarations of interest. Members are asked to consider whether you have any uh, disclosable pecuniary and or any other relevant interest in connection with any matters to be determined at this meeting and if so to declare and state the nature of such, such interest. I would remind members that section 106 of the Local Government Finance Act 1992 applies to this meeting so that if a member present is two months or more in arrears with their council tax, they must declare that to the meeting and must not vote on any budget or council tax item. Any member who fails to comply with this requirement will be committing a criminal offence. Before I ask members to declare any interest they may have in the interest of efficiency, I will read out a list of members who have indicated in advance of the meeting that they have a personal interest in the agenda item 4C, budget 2022-23 and medium term financial plan, insofar as it relates to the school's budget element by the virtue of holding positions as school governors. Councillors Berry, Brian, Carubia, Clements, Collinson, Davis, Fawkes, Gilchrist, Mitchell, Nolan, Smith, Stewart, Williams, Whittingham and Wood. And, and sorry, and, and Councillor Booth. Are there any other? Yes. Thanks, Mayor. Yeah, I'm also school governor, and so is uh, Councillor Cook, who's uh, slightly delayed due to transport difficulties. Thank you. Thanks for that, Pat. Yeah. Right. Additionally, can I report the following personal interest in so far as they relate to the school's budget element by virtue of those members, either themselves or having close family members, work in any of the schools or the council's education and children or young people's directors. Councillors Gray, Adrian Jones, Chris Jones, Puvel, Robinson and Rowlands. Can I ask any members to make any further declarations and remind you that you should state the item number and title and the nature of the interest you have? Any? Mr. Mayor. Could you please stand up? <coughs> it's very tight his eyes. Thank you. Yes, Julie. Mr. Mayor, my son works in schools. Thank you. Thank you. My daughter works for the foster team. Thank We're you. on council. Yeah. And 
I will read. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Uh, my daughter works for a children's department. One of them. And my daughter works for a children's department. And my partner is a, John? My partner is a school governor. Sorry. Past school life. <coughs> okay. Mr. Mayor, my personal interest is I'm a member of a, a Wirral Golf Club. Given the budget discussions. Given the discussions, yeah. yeah. Right, Mayor's announcements. I have not been notified of any apologies. Are there any? And I've got down, sorry, written on me, Caterbeer, who's been given to me. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Caterbeer was uh, un unwell this evening. And in that, Councillor Sir Kelly will be second in the Liberal Democrat motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Kelly. Yeah, uh, Councillor Christine Spriggs, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, we come to um, one part of the uh, evening where I'm asking for a minute's silence. Members, <coughs> if you could please, when I finish reading this, um, stand and join me in a minute's silence in memory of former leader of the council and alderman John Hale, who recently passed away. We should also use this time to reflect on the terrible events occurring in Ukraine. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Ukrainian people at this time. As you may have seen on social media, Ukrainian flags are now flying at Wallasey and Birkenhead Town Halls. Wallasey Town Hall is also illuminated in the colours of the Uranium flag, Ukrainian flag. Joining, uh, joining landmark buildings across the world to provide a small symbol of solidarity with the Ukrainian people. I do hope that it shows our Ukrainian residents and their families and friends that this council and the people of Whittle will stand with them. Please stand. Next item then is item three, which is a budget meeting procedure rule. Uh, members are requested to consider the recommendations from the Policy and Resources Committee uh, of the 15th of February 2022 in respect of the procedure to be adopted for the extraordinary meeting of the Council, as specified in Appendix A to the report of the Director of Law and Governance. I call on Councillor Jeanette Williamson to move the recommendations detailed in the report. And I call upon Councillor Tom Anderson to second. So moved, Mr Mayor. And second. Seconded, Mr Mayor. Do any members wish to comment? No. Can we agree that the recommendations by assent? Thank you. Uh, that's agreed. As a result of that decision, members, I will not be accepting any amendments in respect to agenda item 4C. 
that have not already received and been considered by the Selection 151 Officer and published in the Supplementary Agenda Pack. Move to item 4, which is matters requiring approval or consideration by the Council um, recommendations from the Policy and Resources Committee 17th of January and the 15th of January 2022. A Council Tax 22-23 tax base discounts and exemptions and local Council Tax Reduction Scheme. This is a referral from the Policy and Resources Committee held on the 17th of January 2022. I now call on Councillor Janet Williamson to move the recommendations detailed in the report. So moved, Mr Mayor. I call on Councillor Nolan to second. So seconded, Mr Mayor. Pose of the motion, Jeanette Williamson. Do you wish to speak to this item? If so, uh, you now have five minutes. I don't wish to speak to you, thank you, Mr Mayor. Okay. I am not aware of any amendments, so I propose we move to the debate. Are there any speakers? And you have three minutes to address the council. No. Um, Second of the motion, Councillor Nolan, do you wish to speak uh, seconding the motion? If so, you have three minutes. I don't intend to speak, thank you, Mr. Mann. No, I'm fine, thank you. There being no further comments, we will move to the vote. Straight away. All those in favour, please show. Any votes against? <coughs> oh, film it. Right. Uh, any any vote sorry, yeah, any abstentions? That's carried unanimously. We now move to Capital Monitoring Quarter 3, 2020-2021. This is a referral from the Policy and Resources Committee held on the 15th of February 2022. I call on Councillor Janet Williamson to move the recommendations detailed in the report. So moved, Mr Mayor. And I call on Councillor Nolan to second. So second, Mr Mayor. Councillor Williamson, do you wish to speak to this item? And if you do so, you now have five minutes. I don't wish to speak, thank you. I am not aware of any amendments, so I propose we move to the debate. Are there any speakers? No. Um, second of the motion... Councillor Nolan, do you wish to exercise your right to speak? So, uh, you have up to three minutes. No, thank you, Mr Mayor. I will be speaking. Thank you. Um, right to reply. Councillor Williamson, do you wish to exercise your right to reply? If so, you have three minutes. There will be no further comments. Yeah. No, thank you. I don't think you would. Um, all those in favour, please show. Any against? All clear. And any abstentions? No. That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Item C, um, budget 22-23, uh, medium-term financial plan. 
councillors, it is my intention to run one single debate on the motion to, together with all of the recommendations, amendments, sorry, amendments put then, uh, but then take separate votes at the end of discussion on the individual amendments as, they, as if they had been debated separately. Would I, like to, I would like to invite the Director of Resources to provide a quick update to her report. Chair. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you for the opportunity just to mention this this evening. I just wanted to make uh, the Council aware of a change to the figures that's been circulated with the supplementary pack today, uh, a change that, to the report that went to Policy and Resources Committee last week. At the committee last week, an amendment was proposed and agreed relating to libraries. The first part of the amendment was to keep Greasby and Rock Ferry Library open on a permanent basis. The second part of the amendment was to keep all the libraries included within the proposal for closure open until the 1st of November. And this was to allow expressions of interest to come forward for community asset transfer. The latter part of this amendment was at a cost of £470,000. However, the latter part included the cost to keep Greasby and Rock Ferry Library open until November and should have been reduced given the first amendment had already been passed from £470,000 to £380,000. The impact of this is a reduction in the cost of keeping the remaining libraries open from the 1st of November of £90,000. Thank you. I'll start to say that again. Thank you, Chair. Um, with that, I, I refer members to pages 59 and 68 of the summons and call on Councillor Jeanette Williamson to formally move the Policy and Resources Committee budget resolution and set out on the summons, including the Labour Group alteration as detailed in the supplementary agenda pack. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And I can now call on Councillor Nolan to formally second. So seconded, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We have amendments in respect of the budget from the Liberal Democrats, Green Groups, and from Councillor Joe Bird, of which all are detailed in the supplementary agenda pack. Um, so I now call on. Um, Councillor Gilchrist to formally move the budget amendment as detailed in the supplementary agenda pack. So I move, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, and and sec the second again, please, is Councillor Kelly. Thank you, Sue. Um, I now invite. Councillor Cleary to formally move the budget amendments as detailed in the supplementary agenda pack. So moved, Mr. Mayor. I call on Councillor Walsh to formally second. So seconded, Mr. Mayor. I now call on Councillor Baird to formally move the budget amendments as detailed in the supplementary agenda pack. So moved, Mr. Mayor. And I call upon Councillor Cook to formally second the First Amendment in respect to Europa Pools. So seconded, Mr. Mayor. Does any member wish to second Councillor Bird's Second Amendment, please? Mr. Mayor, can you please listen? It's very difficult here tonight. You've got a crowd behind you and everything else. If you want to speak, please stand. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, for the sake of democracy, I will second Councillor Joe Bird's amendment. Shall we then move into the uh, 
budget debate. The Council will now debate the Policy and Resources Committee budget recommendations as moved, together with the budget amendments as one debate. I remind members that at the end of the debate, a series of recorded votes will be required. Um, proposer of the motion, Councillor Williamson, you now have 15 minutes to speak to your motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, tonight is the most difficult budget I've ever been involved in as a councillor. Following our request for capitalisation and the recommendations contained within the Ada Burns and SIFPA reports, we're also being told by the government we must cut nearly £20 million from our spending on the services we provide for our communities, or they will do it for us. And I'm sure tonight we'll hear the same old tired and lazy lines about labour, but allow me to provide some context to our position. Royal Council's had £225 million stripped from its budget since 2010. We've lost £450 million in spending power, and all in the name of austerity. The cruel ideology that punished Northern Labour Councils in particular. According to the recent Marmot report, the Local Government Association estimates a £5 billion shortfall in funding by 2024 for councils to maintain current services in England. The Institute of Health Equities 2020 report, 10 years on, showed local authority expenditure per person was lower in the most deprived local authorities and in the north of England. In England, the North West has had the highest level of funding shortfall for councils in 2020-21. Prior to the pandemic, due to the reductions in core funding, local governments in England were estimated to face a funding gap of 6.5 billion by 2024-25. The Tories will no doubt talk about how much Covid funding we've had from the government, but will fail to say it was either ring-fenced for the likes of adult social care or was passported straight to businesses. What they won't say is that we lost £25 million during the pandemic in revenue, of which only half has been reimbursed. Central government payments to help local authorities manage the increased pressures has not been adequate. And instead, most local authorities in England are further in debt than they were before the pandemic. Council budgets have been stretched for some time, but for many, the pandemic has exacerbated the problem. It's increased the amount local authorities have to spend on supporting their communities, and at the same time, his income streams hard. The Deputy Director of Local Governance Research Centre based at De Montfort University said, the pandemic had deepened regional inequalities, particularly in England, by pushing financially burdened councils into further difficulty. She said the pandemic has forced councils to think the unthinkable. We are in a position where some councils are struggling to continue just to deliver the statutory services. And analysis from 2020 show nine out of 10 major local authorities in England didn't have enough cash to cover their spending plans. This situation has been made worse by the coronavirus. That last bit of analysis was by the BBC, by the way. And you wonder why this government would all rather scrap the BBC licence fee. Mr Mayor, if you've turned on the television or radio lately, or read a newspaper at any point in the past few weeks, you'll have heard the phrase levelling up. It's the Conservative gov government's bus term much like Big Society was 12 years ago. The Big Society proved to mean trying to make struggling communities fill in the blanks left behind by ruthless cuts to public services that many of the poorest in society relied upon. And sadly, levelling up is proving to be a similar fallacy. Boris Johnson's government speaks of lifting up communities, spreading opportunity and access to things that will help our young people thrive. So many onlookers might find that puzzling, that the government believes the young people of Wirral have access to too many libraries in which they can fall in love with knowledge, too many leisure facilities in which they can fulfil their dreams, too many school crossing patrols to get them across the road safely. 
Make no mistake, whatever the theory, the practice of this Tory government is to level down. According to the government, libraries, leisure centres, recreation spaces like municipal golf courses, affordable parking permits for those who live in busy areas, and even our public toilets are luxuries we can ill afford. To those who cannot afford to buy books, from the parents of young children to pensioners, the government is saying lead, learning and reading is a luxury. But the people don't will feel like they are luxuriating because they have access to our services. They think they're the least people anywhere that should be able to expect at least a civilised society. The Conservative government seems to take the view that anything beyond the bare minimum we as a council are legally required to provide is enough. Try to square that with levelling up. The idea that anything beyond the most basic services is more than we deserve. Are we being unreasonable? Do we think we're a special case? No. This is happening around the country. But anyway, here's the news headlines. While we can still afford to hear it. Despite the fact the government has taken £225 million of public spending out of the Wirral in the last 11 years. Despite the fact that they are digging deeper into our virtually empty pockets. The Labour group has come up with a budget that balances the books in the fairest way possible under the constraints we have. And so this year, the financial challenges were so great, we requested permission to borrow money to bridge that gap. Not an ideal solution, I'm sure you'll agree, but like so many other councils, we're reaching the end of the road. We have to cut nearly £20 million from our budget. And we've been told to do that by a government who are not invested in our communities or in Wirral. Where our cherished assets and services are not valued in terms of how they benefit our communities and how they contribute to overall health and well-being in a borough where inequalities are vast. Mr Mayor, the process of budget setting this year has been soul-destroying and not something I ever envisaged or wanted to be part of. But the expectation was that we work together on a cross-party basis, and that we have done. There have been predictable disagreements along the way, and we all have very strong beliefs about the role of local councils, but we have got there. However difficult this has been, I will not, and members in this room will not stand by and let faceless bureaucrats step in and make those cuts for us. And so it is to this end I would like to thank the members of my group who have spent the week since we were told how we needed to make such cuts, exploring options which we've now put together in the form of our budget amendments. And I am pleased that we've scrapped parking permit increases, we've saved school crossing patrols. I'm delighted that we've thrown a lifeline to the Woodchurch Leisure Centre by investing 330,000 ring fenced and giving a lifeline to our libraries and other threatened leisure services so that cases for community asset transfers can be given time to come together. And in doing so, we've made sure that a policy of community asset transfer is underpinned by the principle of building wealth in our communities and not just having a fire sale for the benefit of the highest bidder. And I'm pleased that we've invited bids on Brackenwood and Hoylake golf courses as a way of saving our precious municipal golf courses. Our amendments have made clear that there will be no building on our green belt and green spaces, that the Climate Emergency Fund has been restored to its full amount, that we will not close public toilets, there will be no reduction in our antisocial behaviour team, our residents need to feel safe in their homes and their communities, and that £113,000 has been placed in a ring-fenced pot to help residents struggling with rising fuel bills. That any community asset transfer will be underpinned by community wealth building principles so that it is a fair one and equitable to all those involved. Labour knows what matters, what's essential and what's not. Labour knows what's fair, that you build a fair society by giving everyone more and not less. By giving communities the means to build up and not driving them down. Labour values our communities and we will work with them 
to keep our cherished assets and services open where possible. We will not allow these cuts to diminish our ambitions around community wealth building and around regeneration. We will build on the fantastic regeneration in Birkenhead and in Seacombe and in Liscard to name but a few. Labour values the environment and is fully committed to keeping the Environment, Climate Emergency and Transport Committee. Labour values our workforce and has worked tirelessly to avoid compulsory redundancies. We must thank our amazing staff for everything they have done for working round the clock during the pandemic to ensure communities, residents and businesses were safe, fed and supported. And for their con continued commitment to this council and to rural residents. We must ensure that their health and well-being is paramount going forward. Mr Mayor, throughout austerity, Labour has a record that I am proud of. We have looked after our residents and our staff. We have kept our services open and looked after the most vulnerable. And whilst we've been criticised for avoiding difficult decisions, I will hold my head up high in the knowledge that we've put our residents first and will continue to do so. And so, Mr Mayor, for those reasons, I urge everyone who believes in what is fair and decent to vote for this budget tonight. Keep on forgetting to put the mic on, I'm very sorry. Uh, Councillor Wendy Clements, as Chair of the Children's, Young People and Education Committee, you now have seven minutes to speak to the school's budget uh, elements of the Policy and Resources Committee budget recommendations. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'm pleased to propose the school's budget for 2022-23. This budget, Mr Mayor, is funded by Rinkfence Dedicated Schools Grant and it supports early years, maintains schools, academies, colleges and other providers. Mr Mayor, because of Covid, the last couple of years have been very challenging for our schools and our children and young people. I'm sure I speak for all the council when I express thanks to school leaders, to teachers and staff for their work under very challenging circumstances to support our children. Mr Mayor, in context, the government is boosting funding for school pupils to record levels with an additional £4 billion this year. That's a lie. The total rural budget of just over £316 million represents an increase in planned expenditure of £14.65 million from the previous year. Covering the delivery of education for all schools for early years providers, the additional support for children and pupils with high needs, plus frontline and central support services. And there is a contribution of £1.5 million in there too, to PFI costs from council resources. Mr Mayor, this budget was considered by the Schools Forum on the 18th of January, and there were no adverse comments from the forum members at that time. So Mr Mayor, as part of the headline figure, Schools receive £237.8 million, and this has increased by £7.5 million due to the increases from the government in the amount which is allocated for every primary and secondary pupil. In addition, Mr Mayor, the government is supplying a further tranche of funding with rural share expected to be another £7 million. Exact details not yet available. High needs funding of £54.3 million will deliver a range of educational support, including specialist schools, specialist provision in mainstream schools, alternative provision, the hospital school, together with top ups for pupils in mainstream school places. This funding has increased by £5.76 million in recognition of a rising need. It would be fair to say that demand for services continues to grow and the COVID pandemic has added to that. The Wirral High Needs Strategy is seeking to supply growth in specialist provision and mainstream school specialist basis. And the budget does show 
that it's expected that demand will exceed funding in 2022-23. As the high needs strategy matures, Mr Mayor, it's expected to bring overall costs within the funding available over the next three years. Mr Mayor, there are fewer children on roll for two, three and four year old funding. Therefore, although the government's early years national funding formula has increased per pupil, the amount received this year will be lower. And Mr Mayor, grants such as pupil premium, which represent additional funding for schools, um, for pupils who are very often deprived, that's not included in this budget. That's been increased as well this year. So Mr Mayor, there's much to be glad about in our schools, funding and our schools budget there's a great many challenges for schools and governors as well as they deliver what our pupils and young people need. But I'll leave it there, Mr Mayor, to commend the budget to Council. Thank you. Councillor Nolan, as seconder, do you wish to speak now or reserve your right until the end of the debate? Up to seven minutes. I'll reserve, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry, move to the Conservative group. Uh, Councillor Anderson, as leader of the Conservative group, you now, you now have up to 15 minutes to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And firstly, can I take this opportunity to pay tribute to our late colleague, uh, Alderman John Hale, and can I thank members who have expressed um, the sympathies to me and the Conservative group, um, and I will pass them on to John's family. John did serve Wirral for more than 30 years in many guises, um, notably as leader. He was a true gentleman, always generous with his time and advice, but only when asked. One thing that he was most proud of back in 1984 was securing £1 million of renovation for the extension of West Kirby Marine Lake, and I'm sure we're all grateful we did that. It would be hard to imagine Wirral without our famous marine lake, and John will be sorely missed by everybody. Now, turning to the budget, Mr Mayor. The Policy and Resources Committee recommended budget tonight has been months of work, negotiation, and turmoil. And it was only four months ago that two independent assurance reports commissioned by the Department of Leveling Up, Housing and Communities was published. And in those two reports, shone a light on the decades of irresponsible financial decisions that leadership of this council has made. Short-term one-offs, squandering 49 million from council reserves to balance a budget year on year, and the inability to make long-term financial decisions has led to this mess we are in today. And I noticed the leader quoted a lot of media quotes, so just let me quote a few media quotes closer to home on what they reported in the last decade. Let's go back to June 2013, when the Wirral Globe reported that overcharged residents have been waiting for three years to be repaid by Wirral Council. Let's go back to October 2013. Liverpool Echo reports that fraudsters con the council out of £45,000. Town hall bosses thought cash was going towards a care. Let's go to November 2013, when Wirral Globe blasts a Downton Abbey style staircase that cost £850,000 on a fire escape. Let's go back to September 2014, when the Liverpool Echo reports that an investigation launched after Wirral Council paid consultancy company five times the agreed £50,000. That's £200,000 more that was in the contract price. Let's go to February 2017, when the Wirral Globe reports that Wirral Council books out 1.3 million on temporary managers and consultants omitted out of an outcry from cuts. Let's go to February 2017, when the Wirral Globe reports Fury as Wirral Council hires Labour's own policy advisor to be their new investment chief at a cost of £350 a day. That worked out well, didn't it? Let's go to April 2017. The Wirral Globe reported the cost of push, pushing the council's Wirralview newspaper through the letterbox soared to £126,000 a year. 
and let's go to April 2018. The Wirral Globe reports, Wirral Council under fire for lending 50 million to other local authorities. Let's skip to November 2018. The Wirral Globe reports how a council consultant earned £245,000 from the public purse over 14 months. Let's skip forward to February 2019 when the Liverpool Echo reported that the cash drop Wirral Council buys a few cinema in Birkenhead for 7.1 million. Let's go now to April 2019. Okay, we've got, we've got the Daily Mail instead, so not quite local, but get the gist. Council fat cat and nearly four times the salary of Prime Minister with his £600,000. That was referring to the payoff that one of Wirral's strategic directors. Let's then go to March 2019, when the Council, uh, World Globe reports the Council paid huge amounts of money, £182,979 to be precise, to a company they only found out was dissolved by Googling it. That worked out get well again, didn't it? Let's go to November 2019, when the Liverpool Echo reports that nearly £30 million was spent in six months outside of normal processes that we paid with anybody who didn't have a purchase order number. Let's now skip to August 2021, where the World Globe reports that the Council's £500,000 way out of the Holy Lake Golf Resort folly that you paid off for your mistakes. Mr Mayor, the reason I highlight these issues is because we, all parties, must ensure that those collective failures and the shame and embarrassment that it brought to Wirral and Wirral Council, not to mention the detriment effect on our residents can never happen again. The committee system and army government structure has highlighted these poor practices and rightly forced us to work together to set the reset of the council's finances. And I noticed that the leader in her speech, you know, everything, all the good stuff is down to the labour budget, everything else, and that's all down to Tory austerity. But, you know, those are the highlights there. I'll email you all the links in the press. There's many more, I just couldn't fit it in. 15 minutes. But the committee system um, has, has helped us to put a foot and shine a light on this. And I will actually pay tribute, so I won't be churlish, and thank the leader of the council for reaching out to all parties for the good of the borough. The Conservative group stood ready to do this for some time and put the best interests of rural residents first. So I do say thank you to her and the other party leaders for the working together. The last four months have been challenging, but showcases what collectively we can achieve when we need to. I just hope in the coming years that we continue in the same vein, working together, and we'll achieve more than retreating into narrow ideological stances and dogma. Mr Mayor, in the last 18 months, the Conservative government has rightly supported Wirral with unprecedented amounts of money, and no surprise, you know, but you know, we've seen 265 million pounds to see us through this COVID crisis. This huge amount has protected